So you've chosen ice. The shield powers it. So kind of giving a brief overview of ice. Ice itself revolves around its defense. So uh, primary as a tank, you get 65% defense while not blocking. You don't have to worry about the perception or the, the PvP aspect of it. Uh, the main mechanic to ice is the ice armor. So using a shield power. So basically, if you're looking at the description of a power, it's going to have a shield in yellow text in brackets. Any power like that uh, is going to contribute to ice armor. So for example, I mean, there's not really any examples that don't count, but uh, considering phase dodge, if I say if I jump to phase dodge here, kind of skipping ahead, but um, if we jump to phase dodge, phase dodge, we all know is a shield, blocks da technically shield, it blocks damage, absorbs damage, but it doesn't have that shield icon in, in the brackets. So it's not classified as a shield, even though we know it blocks some damage. It's just classified differently. So going back to ice armor. So ice armor, you get an extra 35% defense while not blocking. And then when you take damage that is not absorbed by shield while in tank girls, what that means is that if, if an attack is high enough to go through your shield, so your shield wasn't strong enough to stop it, reduce the cooldown of shatter restraints by one second. And it has a one second internal cooldown. So we're going to jump ahead because uh, shatter restraints will cover in the load section. But shatter restraints is just the group breakout. Uh, 18 second cooldown, so that means if the damage went through your shield, you get basically get knocked the one second off each time for that uh, 18 seconds. So it just means you can earn your group breakout. Uh, and technically, this is shield is the weakest shield, which I'll cover in the base shield multiplier. Uh, but we can talk about that now, actually, because that's the with the ice tanking revolving around shield usage and counters and stuff like that, too. But the, the primary aspect of ice is using shields. So if we go to your stats tab, go to dominance. So shield equals base shield multiplier times 112.5% restoration and 150% dominance. So basically what that means is that if you take your restoration stat and your dominance stat and then multiply them by those percentages, you're going to get a multiplier number. And what that means is, is a fancy way of saying just how much damage your shield can absorb. Uh, because different shields have different base shield multipliers, which means they have different strength levels. So it just means general rule of thumb is the higher the dominance you have or the higher restoration you have is the more damage your shield's going to absorb. That's what you have to take away from that. So looking at a spec, it's going to be hybrid. Uh, ice is more of an active tank. You've got much more time to execute combos because you're using shields, as opposed to, say, like atomic tank where you're in your combos. So with the critical healing chances, there's nothing that Ice has as a self-heal ability. So you can just skip these and go 10 and 10 just to save yourself some skill points. I mean, the only thing these would really affect would be like your, um, your soda would impact it, your mystic symbol, the seven. So, I mean, if you've got like plenty of skill points and go ahead, but really it's not necessary to, to spec those and it's not going to be that noticeable. So, with ice being the primary stat of dominance, as you saw there, 150%. Dominance is going to be your primary spec. Now, this is where it gets a little bit different. Uh, a lot of it's going to depend on your skill points uh, because you need to take restoration and health. You just can't take no health as, as an ice tank because, like, when you the damage goes through your shield, which is it, which it is. If you, in regular content, it's not going to really matter. But when you start to go to elite content, obviously you will have damage that goes through your shield. Or even worse, you're going to have uh, raids like say Phoenix Cannon, where you have shield penetration mechanics. So your shields really do nothing to those types of attacks because they're designed to penetrate shields. Another big example would be like Merc's Gut Hook uh, from Crown of Thorns. That's scripted to get you 80% and goes through your shield. So at that point, oh, I mean, it doesn't really matter for Gut Hook, but uh, for other aspects like the pen shield penetration mechanics, if they bring those back, because for a while there was a few raids where they had plenty of shield penetrating mechanics like the dots. Uh, like think of the dot on the final boss of Clock Tower. Uh, that dot, it goes through your shields. So it's uh, just a constant uh, pressure, as well as just dots in general. So if you have a very high ticking dot, it puts a lot of pressure on a shield uh, because it's going to make sure it's going to go through the absorption very quickly. So you still have to have a high base health pool. You can't just ignore it completely. So the general rule of thumb is you want to at least put 100 into restoration if you can afford it. If not, do like a 60 40 split. Uh, on myself on live server just because I have like you know 600 skill points or whatever I can put like 150 into restoration and the rest into health but at least putting it into 100 restoration you get that 10% 
So you get that 10% increase in restoration. After that, it's just a uh, statistical upgrade. So you see here, if I went up for another skill point, it gave me five restoration example. It's, it's not going to give me any large percentage increases after 100. And after that, I can put into the, uh, you know, I could put 50, 60, whatever skill points you have left. In terms of iconic powers, you're going to want to take Amazon Deflection. You're going to want to take Hard Light Shield. And then technically, uh, Mesmerizing Lasso is your option as well, uh, because uh, what I'll touch on, Ice doesn't have a single target taunt pull. It, it's uh, not a pull. It's, it's still a single target taunt, but it doesn't act as a pull. So sometimes a pull is a preference if you have to separate an ad or separate a boss. So that's why I would always spec Mesmerizing Lasso as well as an Ice Tank. In terms of super speed, same thing. If you've got the skill points to afford it, take the uh, Iconic Innates. But uh, you definitely want to take Dash Attack as a nice tank. Or Perfect Poise if you're acrobatics. Flight, don't take Dust Off. Or don't take, um, what is it, Gale? For, not Gale for skimming. The, the, dust, the, the dust Off equivalent for uh, skimming. I can't remember offhand. But don't take those shields. They're useless. Uh, so we've got Restart Recoveries. And then in terms of your weapon, once again, your weapon choice is something uh, preference to yourself. With ice, uh, you're going for counters. Uh, so what I mean by that is that you're focusing on if the boss uh, block breaks or break or, or blocks, you can counter, uh, making sure you check your feints, which will be those uh, yellow faint lines, depending if, the, if it's going to be a fake counter or not. But uh, ice, since it's an active tank, you know, if there, like say if a boss is fighting you as atomic, you just stay in your combos. If I mean, the, if the boss is going to just hold block for you and just telegraph an attack, then yes, of course you can block break, but other than that, you're mainly staying in your combos. Uh, and then uh, watching if you want to turn on your, or, or I think it's on my default actually, your um, vulnerability icons. But it just means that you want a wet weapon that A is a fast lunge, has a good block breaker, and then you're comfortable with. So that's why I choose one handed. And with ice, since I'm more active, I do take uh, the tree just so that, or at least I take down to flip slash just so I can do some actual combos as well. So everything's in trap, but. Uh, that's your choice. If you want, I know plenty of tanks that use shield. You can use martial arts. Uh, I know plenty of tanks that use staff as well for um, those three extra, uh, basically CCs and juggles. But the rule of thumb is that you want something that you are comfortable with using that has uh, good counters with. So to touch on the gear mods for ice, in your weapon, it's always going to be absorption adapter. Basically, just activate shield, reducing your damage by 75% until damage equal to 30% of your health is taken. Now, for your helmet mod, uh, this is going to be your preference just depending on what shield you run. Ice doesn't really have any tanking shield you want to run as a power set, so you're going to be using your movement mode ones. So, if you want a shield, it's going to be dash attack or perfect poise. But you, you don't want to be using... Um, Hibernation, you don't want to be using um, Ice Elemental. Sorry. And I, there it is, Dash Attack. Once again, with all tanks, you don't want to not be blocking uh, because you also have a four, you lose your defense if you're not blocking, so that's why I always take four to fight assault. In your back mod, your strongest shield is going to be Winter Ward, which I'll cover when I do the base shield multiplier, so that's why you want to take this re re reduction. Shadow Restraints you already have with your Ice Armor, uh, possible shield, the timing reduction, plus, I mean, it's not necessarily to have a group breakout that fast and your weakest shield. Reflection used to be the strongest shield. Uh, it's a 12-second cooldown where Winter Ward's uh, a lot higher, so you want to make sure you get Winter Ward uh, in your back pocket as much as possible. With your chest mod, you're going to be going hardy, so increase your health by 5%. Leg mod, leg mods don't scale at all. Bitter winds you won't be using as a tank. Winter tempest you won't be using as a tank. Technically, you could use frost land, but there's a better uh, alternative move. Uh, but once again, these leg mods don't scale whatsoever, so you can just not worry about it. 
in your hand mod, once again, you, you'd think you'd want to use regenerative shielding to get your shield back because you're using so many shields as ice, but these, these hand mods haven't scaled, or at least like the regenerative shielding, mighty smashing, these don't scale whatsoever anymore, so just take max damage. And your foot mod, once again, you, there are some situations that would call for explosive block, but if you have a lot of adds with explosive block, it's going to be a detrimental to the DPS and just really annoying and chaotic. And especially since ice doesn't have like a, a pull like epicenter or uh, backdraft, uh, it's got a different type of pull. So it's if the ads are sent flying, it's a little bit awkward to get them all back. So in that case, you're taking Tumbling Mastery. Just make sure your dodge roll is not vulnerable interrupt, as well as that extends your dodge uh, length, basically. So you get to cover more ground. Okay, and then one thing as well, in your trinkets, you'd be using a, a tank trinket that's perfectly fine. You could use the consumables, which I'll cover, uh, orbital, spy drop, but one of the most beneficial trinkets are going to be a breakout trinket, which I'm going to show you how to get. Okay, so I can't speak to the Hall of Doom, but at least for the Watchtower, wherever you have your PvE vendors, if you go up to one of them, or I believe it's pretty much every single one, but multiple vendors have it, you're looking for this trinket right here. Uh, it doesn't mean uh, the name of the trinket's going to change, the icon could change, but what you're looking for is in the Infects, Breakout, 30% control resistance every uh, for yourself for 12 seconds. Now, it doesn't matter if you take the tank trinket, it doesn't have any, any benefit, uh, it's still the same breakout, the stats are irrelevant. So this is what you want to buy to have on hand. A, because you can break out uh, fast, you can also clip your shields with it. Like I said before, hard light shield uh, has a bit longer of an animation, so if you, want, if you need to clip it and summon it, you've got hard light shield instantly. But that's where you find the breakout trinket. Multiple vendors have it. Just look for that uh, effects of the control resistance. Okay, so if we're looking for artifacts for ice tanking, you do have some multiple options. The most important artifact is going to be Manacles of Force. Now what this does is, well, the primary reason is all the shield cooldowns are reduced by 10%. So since ice is using so many shields, you get the extra 10% reduction. So that's very handy. As well as how Manacles of Force works is that uh, as long as an attack de deals at least 30% of your health. So if it's going to go through your shield and, and hit you for 30% of your health, which is quite possible as ice. Because uh, once you have go through your shields, all you have is your defense to help you. So essentially what this is, is a Satan attack hits for 200k. So it would, uh, you get hit for 100k, and then the other 100k would be split between a dot for the next five seconds. So then you just have a massive dot, which again, you could shield through. So say uh, all you have is like reflection up, which is a weaker shield. You hit reflection, goes through reflection, does 30% of your damage. Then you start taking that massive manacle dot. You pop hard light shield or winter ward, which would be your stronger shields, and you can absorb that entire dot. And then the other nice thing about it is that when unshakable triggers, you, the cooldown is reset on Winter Ward, which is your stronger shield. Uh, so that's why it is a very handy artifact, especially at 200. The next is going to be Mystic Symbol of the Seven. This increases your defense as well as gives Ice some passive healing over time. Uh, so since Ice has no passive heals, like say, like doesn't have any heals like Rage, Atomic, uh, or Fire, <laughs> the obvious one. Uh, it uh, suffers a little bit from that, but at least with Mystic Symbol, you have not only the extra defense if there's multiple NPCs around you, but you also get some health healing over time. And then the third artifact, this is where kind of you have the option. Uh, you have a new artifact called Cersei's Mass. This is, was designed with ice in mind. So I'll show this uh, in, the, in the rotation example. But when your shield is broken, your incoming healing is increased by 30% for 6 seconds and additional stun up to 5 enemies. So what this means is that when you have damage that breaks your shield, you get incoming healing increased by 30%. This is at rank 200. So what that means is that since you're in the most vulnerable state when your shield breaks, you have extra healing in for that six seconds. So the healing uh, for the healers can keep you alive until you have your next shield. And then say if you're in like a hallway or out of a whole bunch of ads around you, uh, you would have that stun as well. So if they're the reason why your shield broke, uh, then you stun them as well to give yourself some breathing room. The other option is Eye of the Gemini. Eye of the Gemini is going to be your uh, basically your support artifact, but it also is handy because when you activate a supercharge, you get an uh, increase of 5% of your dominance and restoration, which then in turn increases your shield strength. 
uh, or not, I wouldn't say sealed strength, but how much your shield can absorb, technically. Uh, so that's why it's handy for that. And then you'd use, you'd pair that with like dash attack or, or pheromone bloom or um, perfect poise if you're acrobats. But that's your choice. So if you want to, I don't personally want to supercharge his ice, which I'll show you in the loadout section. But if you do want to supercharge, then you definitely want either Gemini. So in terms of consumables that you'll be using, uh, you're going to be using the Bulldozer because Dominance gives you the highest uh, increase on your base shield multiplier, so 150% of your Dominance, so then you want as much Dominance as possible. So that's why you're not taking like a Resto Soda or a Nutri or an All Natural. In terms of consumables, because Ice doesn't have any stuns, uh, you're going to be using Chromatic Emitters. And then Personal Deputy Field, this is basically just an extra shield on top. It's not mandatory, but it's just something that uh, would get you some extra level of protection. So this does not follow base shield multiplier. This is just a fixed damage absorption. In terms of augments. So with Tank, once again, you want as much dominance as possible, so then all your augments are going to be dominance-based. So in your origin augments, this may look a little bit different if you're like a Wonder Woman mentor or, or a Batman mentor. I'm Superman, so that's why I have these types of uh, implants. So this screen may look a bit different, but then they're all going to be the same. It's still going to be a dominating implant or dominating uh, exabyte or whatever it's going to be called. And then your head mods, the, the adaptive ones. These are going to be episode specific, so these names may not be the same. Uh, but whatever episode you're in, in terms of uh, DLC, then this is which adaptive ones you're going to have. Once again, they're going to be dominance based. So to touch on your generator mods, let's pop over to the layer here. Okay, so I can't speak to the Holodoom again, but at least in the Watchtower and the Tech Wing in the corner here, uh, you can get uh, what we call Affinity Mod bonuses. So if you do choose to level up some Elite gear, depending if you're wearing two, four, six, or eight pieces, you can get different bonuses. So that's on this vendor here. Ideally, you want to get at least four because then you can pick up Dominance A and Dominance B, which gives you a 2% increase on your Dominance, which is a nice uh, statistical bonus. So it'll help with those shields. I mean, technically, you'd run like Rejuvenate Escape if you're running six elite pieces, which would give you a heal each time you use Shadow Restraints. Uh, you could use um, Auto Breakout, which I don't really recommend because sometimes they do mechanics like Dark Side War Factory or Phoenix Cannon, where if you break out, uh, there's an aura damage. You could use Sure Footed, which increases your control resistance. Uh, there's Crippling Stance. You get 10% chance to stun a nearby enemy. Soul Link is if you just say running a pet, but I don't recommend that as any power set besides Earth. So that's the six and eight procs, but focus on at least four pieces of elite gear. So let's jump to layer, and I'll show you where they all go. Okay, so with your layer, if you go to mods, now your blue mod is always going to be health because you don't, obviously don't need powers of tanking. So you take health mods and all the blues. And your support one, since Dominance is going to be, once again, your biggest contributor to your base shield multiplier, you take Dominance in your yellows. And then, like I said, Dominance A and B in your affinities. And then your 6 and 8 proc, don't even worry about it. So that's how you do the generator mods. So in terms of loadouts... Your primary pull is going to be Inescapable Storm. That's going to be your range pull. Uh, think of it like uh, Ragebringer. Think of it like uh, Earth and Grip. Stuff like that. In terms of your next move, uh, this is going to be... You've got basically got two choices. I shouldn't say you have one choice. You should really use Resonating Gale, but some people don't like using that. Uh, I can show you the, the differences here. So these are your primary two CC moves. Frost Slam is just going to be a knockdown. So they stand back up, knock them down again. It doesn't gather them or anything like that, it just knocks them down. I, I've used it before, it's, I mean it's perfectly viable, uh, just a preference, but Resonating Gale is m drastically stronger uh, and has range. So say there's a bunch of ads, you've got like a hallway ads coming up. You hit Resonating Gale, and you completely, basically keep them on their back the entire time, from range. So if you say you're fighting a boss here, and there's adds over there, or adds spawn up, and you don't want them to kill the healer or the controller or anything like that, you can hit Resonating Gale from range, and completely knock them up. And it drags them together as a pull, as you saw, so they're more gathered for the DPS. 
So Raising Gale is probably the best crowd control move in the entire game. So that's why you definitely want that if there's any sort of ads. It's just that you have to get a little bit used to it. I mean, you can still perfectly use it from, from melee range. But uh, it's it does much better as, a, as like a range kite. So that's why I use Raising Gale in terms of this. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put up on, because now we're touching on shields, I'm going to put up a, a cell dock here on the screen so you can see. These are going to be the base shield multipliers. So your weakest shield technically is Shatter Restraint, as you saw there, a 0.84 modifier. Uh, reflection is going to be your next one. Where did Reflection go? Right here. Reflection is a 1.21. Then we go up to Winter Ward, which is a 2.31. And then we go up to Hard Light Shield, which is your Iconic Power Shield. And Hard Light Shield is going to be 2.47. And then technically Amazon Deflection is drastically stronger because it just scales differently. Um, we also have uh, Hibernation stuff at Dash Attack, different shield uh, values there as you can see. But in terms of your next one, I use Reflection because it's going to be your fastest cooldown. Then we've got Winter Ward. Then we've got Hard Light Shield. And then this is basically where the loadout can differ. Uh, like I saw before, with Ice Armor, you, can, you could run like Shadow Restraints in here and, and just focus on Hard Light Shield. Uh, I personally don't run Shadow Restraints that often. It, situations that call for group breakout, then sure. But, I mean, earning Shadow Restraints that fast, um, I mean... It, you can use it to play off your Cersei's artifact, your Cersei's mask artifact, and there's some shield breaking. But uh, in terms of me, personally, I would go for survivability. So then I would do hard light shield, and then I would do either Amazon Deflection, or if I'm running, uh, like say if I'm running Cersei's mask, I'd run Amazon Deflection because there's no point to run out of the Gemini. But if I was using Eye of the Gemini, then I'd run like Dash Attack or Perfect Poise or Pheromone Bloom. Uh, something to proc that, so using supercharge. But you don't need to use the supercharge's eyes. So you could use Amazon Deflection. But if, say, you're doing something else, then you could run uh, Shatter Restraints. So in terms of this is going to be more like your AOE loadout for ads. So say if you're doing a boss fight that has no ads whatsoever, then you can drop Resonating Gale and take an extra shield. So then at that point, yeah, you can take Shatter Restraints and keep Amazon Deflection. Or once again, if you're using Gemini, swap in a supercharge. But then your, your essentially your loadout turns into a pull for to get aggro and to taunt, and then five shields. And this is basically what ice is, <laughs> just running shields. So then say if you're doing a boss fight, even doing a boss fight with ads, uh, you don't need Resonating Gale unless the ads are going to be hitting that much harder. Uh, because you can, Inescapable Storm is still going to pull the ads together. You can, you can still gather them with Inescapable Storm, and then basically just drop your consumables. So say uh, that's why ice does so well with Chromatic Emitters. So I can pull them in and then stun them with the Chromatic Emitter and just keep doing that. And then I have my five shields for the boss. So I can just gather them in, stun them until the DPS kill them, and then I have my shield rotation in between. So that's why even with a boss fight with adds, depending on how strong the adds are or how, how many are there, I wouldn't even run Resonating Gale for that. Now, there's some fights where the ads are overwhelming or they keep spawning. Then, yes, I would use Resident Gale so I can taunt them from range and just kind of knock them down in terms before I can get them and gather them. But uh, it's essentially your loadout and your rotation are going to be running the most shields as possible. So, now that you have a general idea of their loadout, let's jump in and show you some examples of the rotation. Okay, so to touch on kind of like an ad loadout first. Uh, or if you're doing like hallway, so if you find yourself a bunch of ads, you're just going to gather them up. I would equip a shield at the same time, just so you have some kind of basic protection. And if you want to pull all these guys together, as they're going to be a bit scattered, then you can basically just keep really hitting Resonating Gale, flipping that with a shield each time to bring it down. And then what I can do as well is to kind of show off the Cersei's Mask Artifact. So when it breaks, as you basically saw right there, uh, that purple effect you see here, that's when my shield broke. Uh, so we can kind of run another one here. So basically when my shield breaks, I'm going to get a heal, even though they haven't done enough damage to heal me. Or I wouldn't be taking, I don't have any healing in anyway. But it does increase the, the Mystic seven, 7 heals. But it breaks, 
although they're stunned. And the ones that aren't stunned, I can just keep knocking down with Resonating Gale. And then basically you just sit in here, just rotating shields. That's all this. So that's all. Another stun. Or I can be hitting chromatic emitters. That's why chromatic emitters are really your best friend with a nice tank. Because now I have the stuns from the from the Cersei's mask artifact, and then I can have the stuns from the chromatic emitters. And like I said before, if there's an ad lunging it, you know. I can block to either counter. This one, I can oh, just lost the lunge on that one. But same thing, gathered up, stun. And, and that's all it is. Really, you're just rotating shields, and then until the DPS kills them. Obviously, these ads aren't going to do enough damage to me to break my shields consistently. There's the Cersei's Mask proc again. And they can get immune to that, so I mean, the Cersei's Mask is not like OP or anything like that. It's just something extra, set extra level of stun, just to help ice tanking because we don't have any stuns. Because really, they can't get immune to that. Um, Chromatic emitters are much more consistent, but like I said, you got to craft them as a consumable. But it's a, it's a very important consumable to have as ice. And the same thing. If, if I don't want them to attack me, I can I can lunge them while they're doing their their basically the Brock Breakers. And that's all it is. Or I can be active, so I expect my combos. And I can start to do some weapon combos, etc. So I mean that's all it is. You're, you're just gathering ads, either stunning them with Cersei's mask, knocking them down with Raisin and Gale, knocking them down with the Frost Slam, stunning them with chromatic emitters, but that's essentially all you're gonna find with ice as with ads so we'll jump over to doomsday all i'm going to do is take out frozen gale because it's not required we can pop in shatter strengths and then i've got my amazon deflection because a i don't even have supercharge earned and b supercharge is, isn't necessary it just depends on your play style but there's plenty of times tanking that i'm not going to use a supercharge at all so same thing once you're going to taunt Doomsday, I don't, I don't have any, I don't have my shield armor up, so I'm losing that 35% damage. Uh, sorry, not 35% damage, 35% defense. So that's why you want to always clip your taunt with a shield, just so that you have your shield armor active, and you have uh, defense mitigation active. So the same thing, I can counter Doomsday because I've really got nothing else to do. Obviously, Cersei's Master is not going to stun Doomsday. The same thing, if I could cut around. You know, I'm stunned. Gives me time to counter him. But that's, I mean, essentially that's all it is. So that that's why it's it's tricky to give um, real raid examples as ice. Like, I can show you a raid of me being an ice tank or something like that, but it's hard to learn from that because it's all situational. So say... Uh, I didn't have to eat that damage in Doomsday. I could have like Brock broken him. I, I could have dodge roll it. Um, there's I could have uh, countered him so that I'm not taking that damage. So then I didn't have to waste a shield on it. Or the healers could be good where I'm not taking enough damage through my shields. So I mean it's all situational. As long as you know that like it, your shield order goes reflect. Uh, you winter ward. You don't want to waste necessarily because it's your stronger shield. So say if I was say if everything was on cooldown, Amazon affections on cooldown. As you see, like my Frex was used, I've got nothing now. All I've got is a shield. I'm going to have hard light shield in a second, but then that's a 30 second cooldown. So then if I'm saving Winter Ward until um, a time where I actually know I need it, then it gives that option. So another thing we're going to do is a strategy that I use with Amazon Deflection. That's why I always like to use it. So wait for that. So say, for example... You know, I accidentally used two shields at once or, or needed to use multiple shields in a row. Now, with Amazon Deflection, I can sit in Amazon Deflection, be perfectly fine. You can get knocked out of Amazon Deflection in terms of a CC, but it gave me that, because Amazon Deflection is so strong and it's a 30 second cooldown, I can sit in Amazon Deflection and gain that time. Um, let's take a soda here. So basically, I can use that to help reset the counters on my other shields. That's essentially where I'm getting at. So I like to use Amazon Deflection often, uh, not only for the best level of protection, especially against bosses. It doesn't work to work best for adds, uh, because adds can knock you out of it or stun you out of it. It's, it's not a perfect power, 
but uh, it allows me to basically buy a free, you know, four or five seconds because I'm not going to die. It's very, very rare, if even possible, in, in regular raids to die in Amazon Reflection is that strong a shield. I mean, you can die in some instances in Elite because, it, I mean, technically you can get block broken out of it. So there's plenty of ways to die in Amazon Reflection, but it, in terms of just straight tanking damage, uh, it's it's almost, you know, it's, it's second to only a few possibilities. So the advantage of that is that I can sit in Amazon Inflection, know I'm not going to die, unless something happens. That's why I can take like a break on Trinket. That's why it's very handy as a as a breakout. So for example, if I know I for sure I don't want to die, I pop my breakout. Then I go into Amazon Inflection. I'm not going to get CC'd out of it. I can still get block broken, but I can't get CC'd out of it. And then it buys me a free, you know, four or five seconds cool uh, rotation reduction on my shields. So. Uh, hopefully that gives you a uh, proper idea of the foundation for ice tanking. A lot of it, it's just getting used to it. So it's getting used to counters because it basically your know, counter immunity is not going to really help you, but it does give you uh, that time where a boss is going to be knocked down. You know, they're going to be countered or they're not going to be attacking or it's going to be situations where you basically you can just keep them knocked down, stuff like that. They're helpless for a few seconds. They have to get back up. I can block break them, same thing two three seconds if I'm not attacking and then it gets the uh, cooldown reductions on my shields so all it is is getting used to tanking uh, sorry getting used to countering and then getting used to shield rotation so there's ice as a loadout